For this Tree of Life pendant, you will need something round to shape the frame. I am using this plastic mandrel, but you can use whatever you have to hand. I am using a strip of paper just to give me an idea of the length of the wire I will be wrapping. I am using two base wires of half hard 0.8mm bare copper wire. The length will depend on the size of your pendant, but as a guide you will need the length of your strip of paper plus 4 inches or 10 centimeters. I will be weaving the wires together with 0.4mm bare copper wire. I am finding the middle of the weaving wire. Starting from the middle of the base wires, I start weaving. I am wrapping twice around one wire and then twice around both wires and repeating this pattern. I wrap the wires together until I reach half the length of my paper guide. I will now flip the wires and repeat this process from the other end until the length matches my guide. I now start shaping my wires around the mandrel, adding more weaves if necessary.
I am gently flattening my weaves with the unbroken weave on the outside and the weave with the gaps on the inner. I am now bending the unwoven wires parallel to each other. Use the weaving wire to secure the frame and trim the excess. Use your mandrel to correct any distortion to your frame. For the tree I am using 6 lengths of 0.2mm wire, approximately the same length as your paper guide plus 2 inches or 5 centimeters. Put the wires together and fold in half to find the middle. From the bottom of the circle, thread the wire between the two base wires. The best gap is down the side of where both wires are woven together. Separate the wires into two sets of six and twist them together to form the trunk.
To form the branches, start with one set of six and separate two wires. Twist these with the other four a couple of times. Twist the two separate wires together a couple of times. Separate the four remaining wires into two and twist the pairs together a couple of times before twisting the single wires together. Repeat with the other set of six wires. For the leaves I will be using gemstone chip beads. These are Labradorite. Thread beads onto one of the top branches. Thread the wire through the base wires the same as with the roots. Bring the wire back through to the front and thread through again. I am now going to feed the wire back through some of the beads. This part is a little fiddly, especially at a weird angle under a camera, so just be a little patient. Repeat the process with the other top branch. Continue with the other branches, spacing them around your circle. You 
You should now, ha now have full branches with excess wire coming out from between some of the beads. We are going to use these wires to bulk our tree out our tree's foliage. Simply add more beads and then thread the wires through the frame twice. If you are having trouble threading the wires, simply trim off the damaged end. You will probably not need all of the wires. Any excess wires can be trimmed off, being very careful not to cut the main branch wire. Continue until your tree has a nice full canopy. The tree is now complete, so we will now create the bale for the pendant. I am using 0.3mm wire, but any wire thin enough to weave will be fine. The top wires are already separated into sets of two. I start weaving the top pair of wires. I am wrapping twice around the inner wire, twice around both wires, and then twice around just the inner wire. I then pass the weaving wire down to the lower pair of wires, maintaining the gap in between. I wrap twice around the inner wire, twice around both, and then twice around the inner wire before passing the weaving wire back to the top pair. Continue this pattern for approximately one and a half centimetres or half an inch.
I am now bending the base wires back towards each other and shaping the bale. Continue the weave. This bit can be a bit tricky. Your weaves will want to escape downhill, so you will need to use your fingers to keep pushing back your weaves and holding them in place. Unfortunately, there is no magic technique, just practice and patience. I am using this small screwdriver to help me shape the bale. Wrap your woven wires around and bring the outer two wires to the front and cross them over. Here I am just trimming off a mist weaving wire. I am trimming the wires to approximately the same length and I will then use them to make spirals. I start by just curling the ends with my round nose pliers. I then trim a couple of millimetres from the ends before continuing to curl the wires. I am now switching to flat nose pliers to complete the spirals. For the back wires, I am simply trimming off the excess 
and curling the cut ends. Don't discard the wire trimmings, we can use these to make our chain. I am now just using the tips of my pliers to gently make the trunk and visible branches a bit more gnarly. Our tree of life is complete, please stay with me for a bonus lesson using our wire trimmings to make a chain for our pendant. Here we have the trimmed wires from our pendant. These are the guide wires I use to keep my chain links the same size. The standard link length is 2 cm. The fine chain length is 1.5 cm. I am using my standard size guide to cut my wire trimmings to the right size. If I have a piece of wire that is a bit short, I use my fine chain guide. This allows me to have even less waste wire. To shape my fine link chain, I need the very tip of my round nose pliers. I bend each end the opposite way to form a figure eight. I am using my flat nose pliers to very gently flatten and fully close my link. I add the link to the rest of the chain that I made from the wire trimmings of previous projects. To shape my standard size links, I am using the smallest setting on my bale making pliers.
Here I have some 1mm wire trimmings. These are perfect for hooks and eyes to complete the necklace. This piece is approximately 2 inches or 5 centimeters. To create, create a hook fastening, I am using the tip of my round nose pliers to make a small loop at the end. About a centimeter further down the wire, I am using the base of my pliers to create the hook. At the other end of the wire, I make the loop that will attach the hook to the rest of the chain. I have already made an eye for the hook to go through, but I like to add a few more to create an extension chain so that the wearer can adjust the length of the necklace. I use the smallest setting on my bail pliers to make the first loop. I then flip the wire and use the setting below the smallest to create the other loop. Trim the excess wire and add to the chain. I like to use six links in the extension chain. And now we have a fully handmade bare copper infinity chain to go with our pendant. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider a like and subscribe and I hope you will join me for my next tutorial.